Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of season two of the Quarantine Happy Hour, the podcast for those not easily offended. I'm your host, Anais Lucia, and this podcast is also a podcast where I just talk about whatever I want. <laughs> so I am re- pre-recording a lot of these episodes. Today it is Sunday, October 4th, and it is the end of a week that has been basically dumpster fire so (laughs) the first debate between bunker boy and biden happened you know bnb happened earlier this week that was you know made me want to drink um (laughs) then at the end of the week basically all these republicans getting covid not surprising because they didn't want to wear masks social distance so what's gonna happen eventually probably so i started the podcast in april to kind of help pass the time during quarantine and i didn't know that in october um we would still be in this situation i'm not as optimistic as a lot of people especially when it comes to this country (laughs) aka disappointment um like i'm half of me is like not surprised and the other half of me is like ugh, i don't know (laughs) so i kind of can't believe we're still in quarantine Um, i'm kind of happy in a way because the name of the podcast still applies quarantine happy hour so i'm like cool i don't really have to change the name so yeah (laughs) all right so what is the topic of today's podcast i didn't even get to that the topic of today's podcast is not politics (laughs) i just had to kind of uh, talk about that but The topic of today's podcast is introverted comedians. Yes, because in case you didn't know, um, I did start doing stand-up comedy and I am an introvert. And a lot of people that don't know much about comedians or introverts assume that you cannot be an introvert and be a comedian or you can't be an introvert and be an actor. Well, I'm actually both those things and I'm an introvert, so it is possible. (laughs) If you just do a Google search, you will see there's a lot of famous introverts so just because someone's famous or performer doesn't mean they're automatically an extrovert and to kind of talk a little bit more about this topic i have two introverted comedians on the show with me and they're awesome but before i bring them on i have to pour out my drink for this episode and it is one of my favorite types of wines well it is my favorite type of wine (laughs) uh plum wine uh, I've tried pretty much every brand of plum wine I've ever seen. I mean, I'm in the US, so, you know, we get a very limited amount of plum wine. So I kind of have to try every one that I see because I don't see that many. People probably think I'm an alcoholic because I have a drink on this podcast, but really this podcast is pretty much the only time I drink. <laughs> so I don't drink a lot. So no, I am not an alcoholic. And this one is Takara plum wine. I have tried it before, but I don't think I've tried it on this podcast. So let's pour it out and have our first sip of it before I bring on my guests. And <laughs> okay, my glass, in case you don't know, it has three lines on it. The first line says good day, it starts at the bottom, then bad day in the middle, then the top says don't ask. So right now I poured it in the bad day because it's been kind of like a bad week. I mean, all of COVID pretty much, I mean, all of 2020 mostly has been bad. Um, So I'm in the middle, so it is (laughs) quite a bit. And hopefully this will last me the entire show. Oh my gosh, so good. Sorry about the smacking. (laughs) So good. Here you go, look at the beautiful bottle. Ah, bottle, sorry. (laughs) Uh, Takara Plum Wine, please call me for a sponsorship. That would be amazing. Yeah. All right. So now that we've uh, begged for sponsorships, let's bring on my guests. Everyone, please welcome my awesome guests. We have, first of all, comedian, host of the Furthermore podcast and vegetarian, (laughs) Buda Verma. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. From Maryland, right? Yes, Marilyn. Marilyn. Okay. And our next guest is a dude named Parker. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Uh, that's me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He's a, hey guys. also another comedian. Um, and where are you? What state? I'm actually, I'm in Woodstock, Virginia right now. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm so camping. We're all in the <laughs> East Coast. I'm in Florida, Virginia, Maryland. Yeah. Which is which is the worst state. We will let the <laughs> audience guess, but it's probably this one. It's uh, Florida. <laughs> yeah. 
and let's share our drinks. So I already shared it earlier, but I always have to uh, share it again. It is my Takara plum wine. I love plum wine, so that's mine. And you guys, let's see what you're drinking. Show the audience. I have a spring water from Wegmans. It's a solid grocery store. Nice. Nice, very healthy. I'm uh, I'm drinking, uh, you can either call this um, wine from a Yeti mug or it's from a bag. I don't know what it's called, but <laughs> it came out of a little spout from a bag. <laughs> so. Oh my gosh. That's good. As long as it does the trick, I'm good. I just want to thank you for not letting me feel like an alcoholic because most of my guests end up like they're like oh i'm on like a health kick i'm trying to be healthy i'm like really so now i always seem like the alcoholic oh yeah <laughs> no, I'm there i for only you. like drink on the podcast this is my only time to drink but then i look like an alcoholic because everyone else doesn't drink um so thank no, that's, you. i'm here to support you in that i'm uh, i'm here to drink i'm showing up you know <laughs> yes yeah, so showing up with the alcohol that's important yeah, life if you life. ever need someone to make you feel better about drinking like i will be there <laughs> <laughs> with my All yeti right, mug so... <laughs> yeah very classy <laughs> for sure <laughs> okay so before we get into you know some other stuff i always like to ask my guests the what i call quarantine questionnaire didn't think i'd still be using this in october when i started this in april but here we go <laughs> so mm. um it's just a few uh rapid fire questions so just the first thing pops in your head does it have to be a long answer? So I'm going to ask the question and then we're, we'll go with mood it first and then Parker. All right. Okay. So question number one, if you could be quarantined with any celebrity, who would it be? Mood it? Ooh. Um, I would say Hassan Minaj because he's, he started a family and I think that uh, he could be a great host and accommodate me very nicely uh, with his new family. So, yeah. Nice. Parker? Um, man, I think somebody being quarantined with, I'm going to go with Jim Carrey. Nice. Yeah. I think he's kind of a free spirit. He gets bad. He gets a lot of flack for being kind of crazy nowadays, but uh, I actually think of him as kind of woke. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. which is like such a millennial thing to say, but you know, I, li I like what he says. I think he's a smart guy. I think he gets a bad rap. I love him. I've always loved him. Same. All right. Yeah. So question number two, what do you miss most about life before COVID? I miss, I miss like traveling, which is cliche, but um, yeah, there were here in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area, there were at least uh, two, uh, you know, open mics that you could hit in a given night. And um, I was traveling to Philly a little bit for comedy and I was hoping to take that further to NYC. So I would say like the, the kind of nomad traveling lifestyle. Uh, that's what I miss. Yeah. Well, I mean, open mics for sure. Live mics. Mm -hmm. You have to wait for, you don't have the lag for the, <laughs> you can hear people's laughter. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You can see everybody's faces, yeah. you know. All right. Um, number three, what's your cho drink of choice during this time? Ooh. Um, well, I think since the weather is uh, cooling down, I would say like uh, a ginger beer of sorts. Um, I drink alcohol as well. Uh, I, I think I think when I'm like really uh, in the mood to socialize, then like a, a Jack and Coke type of thing. Um, but ginger beer sounds kind of uh, nice and soothing uh, type of thing in this weather. So, I like ginger beer as well. I, I actually had ginger beer for the first time when I went to Jamaica and it was delicious. Um, but I like what you said about the, like the temperature warming up and I actually like fall and winter. So I like to get really cozy, put on my hoodie and drink chai lattes. So I'm going to go with chai lattes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Next, how are you entertaining yourself? been hitting a lot of zoom mics um some live mics in the like suburbs of maryland have come back um not so much in the deeper parts of the cities so hitting mics uh growing my youtube channel i started a podcast called furthermore and i've been interviewing all kinds of folks uh, comedians artists and other 
thinkers and professionals. It's really open ended. Uh, so, yeah, teaching myself other skills with um, video editing and uh, comedy writing. So, um, really, yeah, taking advantage of the, the the quieter times of solace and things. So, yeah, it's been going nice. Nice. All right, Parker. Oof. Um, how I've been entertaining myself. Um, I don't know. You know, I just got a new job, so that's been taking up a lot of a lot of time. I don't have nearly as much of an inspirational uh, answer as Moody. <laughs> Good job, Moody. That's my answer. <laughs> Moody, awesome. You're doing great. You're killing it. <laughs> Congratulations on the job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um. All right. Almost done. Almost done. What music are you listening to? Ah. So uh, because I'm doing a lot of reading and I guess learning like uh, with video tutorials and things. Uh, so I listen to an artist called Bonobo. Uh, he's a DJ uh, and his music is like, it's like ambient sounds without like vocal lyrics. That's really good for uh, like the background, uh, if you will, mm -hmm. like while reading or studying of sorts, um, Bonobo. So I think it'd be characterized as maybe like electronic ambience um i also like mm. cello music uh, like in the background of studying there's a my favorite yes. cellist her name is so zoe beautiful. keating uh zoe keating mm -hmm. is a good cellist and uh, so, so that's the those are the two kind of music genres that's um accompanying my quarantine these days nice uh i've been into oh <gasps> disappeared did i disappear <laughs> am i back yeah. you're back yes. yay okay cool um, I've kind of been into like equal parts. I like, um, like orchestral music. So like, I like to listen to like Brahms and stuff and, Ooh, um, yeah. yeah. And, um, like choral works. Like I like his German Requiem very much. I've been kind of on, on a kick with that. And then I listen to a lot of like hard stuff, like uh, Norma Jean, um, as a favorite band of mine between the buried and mm -hmm. me as well. So, Yeah. Depends on what awesome. I'm doing. If I'm trail running, then I like to the metal, you know, like it mm -hmm. gets me, it gets me turned. <laughs> it gets, it gets me amped. Right. Mm -hmm. If I'm trying to like, you know, relax after work though, it's like, you know, some nice, you know, German song, you know, written like a hundred years ago or something like that. Nice. Love your choices. Both of you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is just yes or no. Okay. I don't want an explanation. Just okay. yes or no. Um, All right. Am I being <laughs> Have no, no, no. It's just a uh, um. Just for it's just for this uh question. I yeah. Just because it's more fun, I think, when it's just yes or no. Okay. Have you ghosted any potential romantic interest during quarantine? Yes or no. <laughs> no. All no. right. Parker decided to disappear. The answer, I guess, is I guess it's a yes. Oh, no. <laughs> We're gonna assume it's a. He Did decided to ghost me? on us. He ghosted us. <laughs> oh, I don't want to answer this question. <laughs> so, Just I'm yes or no. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. Wow, and then he ghosted us too while answering that. <laughs> wow. I'm not trying. I'm just, I'm not trying to ghost you guys. I just can't help it. <laughs> this is too perfect. <laughs> this is too perfect. Ah. Oh, oh my gosh. Yes, you you're back. <laughs> <Okay>. Wow. <laughs> All right. Good to know. Okay. I'm all about the timing. So. Yeah, exactly. Okay, almost done. Almost done. All right. What have you learned about yourself during quarantine? Ooh, I have learned that I do well with structure. So I need, uh, you know, some sort of a routine um, at the very basic level, like, you know, like a time limit uh, to get to bed on time by a certain time, no matter how late it is. Uh, same with waking up, um, regular exercise. Uh, so structure really helps me kind of make the most out of my time. Um, the other side to it, when I think when things fall apart is when I'm just like, when there's too much time in front of me without a set uh, schedule or timeline or deadline mm -hmm. for a personal goal, then like uh, I just get lost in my own head. Um, so structure, structure is very important for me. All right. 
Yeah, I totally agree. That's a great answer. Like I, I, I too learned that I don't have enough discipline to, <laughs> to order my, my own life. So like getting the job was like actually a big thing for me. Cause you know, it, um, yeah, it gives me that structure. It's, it's nice to have. So nice. Yeah. Okay. That's and it. last quote, <laughs> last question. What have you learned about others during quarantine? Ooh, I think that I've learned who's actually busy and who's not because there's, you know, during the lockdown, there's only so much, uh, knowing my friends in particular, uh, like I, I, I'm not speaking for everybody, but there's only, there's only so much that some of my friends could do or be busy with. Um, and, and if they were still like, I don't know, unavailable, maybe for like a game night or, uh, uh, you know, uh, whatever it may be. Um, and, and, and these folks, they're not introverted that like these particular friends I'm thinking of. So I give them a hard time, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're always out and about, uh, but, uh, um, yeah, that was, that was interesting. Just kind of seeing, uh, uh, who, who can like among my friend circle, who could serve as like a reliable soundboard, maybe if I need to vent or, mm -hmm. or, or if it's with comedy, like, uh, uh, getting a second opinion, um, just gauging who's able to kind of be available in a, in a certain time frame. So, so yeah. Awesome. I don't know, man. I've learned that people are kind of trash, you know, like <laughs> people, <laughs> when you, when you squeeze them, when things get rough, they kind of all go crazy. So <laughs> there was yeah. a moment though, like mid COVID, like mid uh, quarantine where everyone started getting like really weird, you know, like, uh, like everyone was going stir crazy and like that starting only fans accounts. <laughs> oh, that was one that? of your favorite. Oh, I said starting only fans accounts. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> everyone has one now. An only no, yeah, not me. That's though, right. But... Speaking of which is doing, is that the next question? Is it your... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's your only fan? <laughs> Do you have a sale going on? <laughs> I think I interrupted you, but you meant that you that that was your favorite part when people were like going crazy. Yeah, and like posting really weird stuff on Facebook. Oh yeah, I love it. That was, <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, something else. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we are done with forty-five minutes later. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> with the quarantine questionnaire, <laughs> so we're gonna reveal because you all know. Um, your Myers Briggs personality type, and we're gonna go in order. Well, everyone, yeah. well, not everyone, but most people that know me and watch see my Instagram probably know I'm INFP. Uh, Mude, what are you? I am also INFP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yup. And Mr. Ghoster. <laughs> oh no, he ghosted <laughs> us again. I'm getting a reputation. I've got some. <laughs> I've got some, like one person. Oh, did I really? Yeah, Am you I just like. Oh, now you're here. We can hear you now. Okay, good. So, so the 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 personality type of someone who ghosts is um, I'm an INTP. Ah. Yeah. So it's the only one one like letter difference between you two. And I used to be an INFP, but like recently I like retested and I went more on the on the T side. So you're like a reformed INFP, you know, just kidding. Yeah, I guess so. You know, like, <laughs> the F is like feel right, and like, I get maybe I got older, and I'm more on like the, the like in an analytical, logical season of life, maybe, versus, mm. you know, when you're younger, I think maybe you tend to be a little bit more, like, emotion-driven, so maybe that had something to do with it, but, Awesome. Yeah. Well, you're, uh, just get ready to yell at me, because I'll probably cry at some point in this podcast. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> all right, so <laughs> you and me get well, I'll be like, cry a lot. like that is an INFP stereotype, is yeah. like that they cry a lot, and I totally fit that stereotype. So I'm just very, yeah. I just feel very strongly, so it's it's okay. How um, often, how often do you cry? Oh, god, I don't know, I haven't kept track. Um, oh, really? probably. <laughs> Probably once a day. I don't know. Have I cried today? I don't think I have, but probably later wow. on today, I'll probably cry at some point. <laughs> but I mean, it's yeah. sometimes good, good, you know, happy tears, the like, queer eye. Oh my gosh, that show always makes me cry. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. 
No, yeah, so those are happy high. tears. Yeah. Maybe yeah, actually people Mario. go for like the uh, you know, like like animal rescue videos or like soldier <gasps> homecoming, that's when they Oh my god, no, I cried those too. Oh my god, those are, <laughs> but those are so beautiful. Like I can't if I see one on Instagram and I'm like somewhere in public, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna save this for later because I know I'm gonna cry. <laughs> so I'm gonna watch it when I'm by myself. Yeah um yeah Smart. like anything with animals <laughs> yeah That's same awesome. with queer eye i will not watch a queer eye before work because i know i'm gonna have to like redo all my makeup so <laughs> <laughs> i can't that show is just too much it's too much mm. okay let's not talk about it because i'm gonna get it i'm getting frequent right now <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so uh as i mentioned in my intro uh today's episode is about introverted comedians because a lot of people at least that i've met um don't know the difference between they don't even know what an introvert is they they think it's just like being shy whereas like that's not really it um there are introverts that can be shy but being shy doesn't necessarily like it's not the same thing and they think that like if you're an actor or comedian or singer like you're automatically an extrovert which is not true there's a lot of you know introverts who do all that stuff so let's just talk about just for anyone who's listening who still don't know the difference <laughs> just gonna go just really quick what it means to be more of an extrovert and an introvert so you can kind of understand the difference um and then we'll talk about how you know a little bit more about you guys and your comedy uh, and all that stuff um so real quick okay what this article i'm going to link it in the show notes and in the video description but here's quick bullet points of what it means to be more extroverted okay so people who are tend to be more extroverted they draw their energy from you know the outside world you know people places things around them you enjoy working in a group that is a nightmare for me so <laughs> definitely not um number two you're always ready to try something new number three uh talking through a problem often helps you solve it so you have to you know talk to it talk about it out loud with a lot of different people get different perspectives uh you find it easy to express yourself spending time alone can drain you uh you find the good in everything um yeah definitely not things i do uh then <laughs> you <laughs> make friends easily okay so you usually have a large circle of friends enjoy meeting new people um and then you find it easy to have heart to heart conversations with strangers or people you don't know very well. For me, it's the opposite. They come to me. I'm not looking for the strangers. They just like come to me and I'm like, I wanted to be alone, but all right, <laughs> gonna have to listen to you now. All right. So that is what uh, being an extrovert is kind of in a nutshell. And what it means to be an introvert uh, simply means to, that you draw your, you know, you get your energy from within. So instead of people or everything else uh you consider things carefully so you you know spend a good amount of time thinking about it before you make any you know decisions uh you prefer to avoid conflict so that's why a lot of times we'll just be quiet because <laughs> we don't want any trouble <laughs> um you're good at visualizing and creating so i i would i guess i would say that we are all pretty creative uh you're a natural listener socializing can drain your natural energy so you prefer to listen and absorb what's happening around you so that's why a lot of times you know we'll be quiet and people like at least in my case too they always think i'm like mad or something i'm like no i'm just like observing <laughs> doesn't mean i'm mad <laughs> i just like to you know see what's going on and um you know process it and stuff uh you need plenty of time for yourself yes that is very true um so i think basically in a nutshell okay if you're still like not sure hmm, am i a, an extrovert or an introvert okay just think about the beginning of lockdown were you freaked out because you're like oh my gosh i'm not gonna be around people if you were freaked out you're probably an extrovert <laughs> if it sounded like a dream come true or and it wasn't that much of a difference from your regular life then you're probably an introvert like me i was like cool i get to like not be around people like i already was doing that's great like <laughs> so that's kind of how you know. So just think about how you were before um, quarantine. So I hope that makes it a little bit more clear for people who were confused. It's not, if you noticed, none of those bullet points said, oh, you're an actor, oh, you're a comedian, it's because you can be both, all right? So I wanna ask you guys, um, how did you guys feel when they, when, you know, the lockdowns were starting where you're like, yeah, great, or how did, just how did, what was your reaction? We'll start with 
uh, mood it? Yeah, so it was a mixed bag. Um, I think overall, it, you know, it, it was a scary thing one way or another. Um, so just being in touch with the news and um, not knowing uh, like the the duration and the timeline. So there, so there, so before like I, I could even get used to it, there was like a starting kind of blanket of fear and uncertainty. And I think that uh, my body, like, was initially appreciative of the fact that um, everything shut down and slowed down because I was expending a lot of energy hitting uh, upwards of at least 10 or 11 mics or shows per week since New Year's. Um, And, you know, I was always on my feet driving from show to show, from mic to mic in the DMV area. Um, And the way my, I think the way my introverted self was justifying that was to, you know, get the stage time, uh, get the tapes, uh, try the new bits and like focus on the, the workflow aspect of it. Uh, but meanwhile, my body was, you know, I, like I, I had to watch my diet, watch my sleep to be able to do that. When everything shut down, uh, my body could like recuperate and regenerate. Uh, my mind was a little bit on a different frequency but I think as I got more and more used to it, um, I was able to create a couple of sketches, YouTube sketches. And that was um, really channeling my, I think, introverted self where my energy was being driven to tasks that were on my terms. Uh, and um, so, so the adjustment uh, did piece together. Uh, it did take some time. And um I, I think I also found a good niche in Zoom comedy. I, I know that a lot of folks, um, m- m- you know, it, it took a bit of like learning and getting used to the lags and the delays, but the networking side and the, the understanding of different audiences and tastes um, from the comfort of my own home, uh, that, that was a very unique uh, niche to kind of get involved in. So, yeah, that's, that's my uh, experience. Nice. Yeah, I think like initially, like – initially I kind of just was kind of excited, but kind of in this, like, um, kind of in this, I, I tend to like actually kind of come alive in, in a crisis. Um, I, I like to, you know, buckle down and be helpful or, you know, um, something like that. So I, I don't know. There was like a, a big part of me that was like amped up, you know, that was you know, taking it seriously. There's almost like a, almost like a fun aspect about it. Um, mm. Kind of as it as it went on, um, you know, I, I definitely didn't find it as hard as like somebody who's extroverted. I felt so bad for like extroverted people. I was like, they must be really struggling. Um, but yeah, as as it went on, I I did feel like the you know, the 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 pressure or the call to like interact with people, like especially with, at mics and stuff, because I yeah I think I associate that with like living. You know, there's there's just like some sense of self that is like tied in with like going to mics and doing comedy now. So Mm -hmm. um, there were some alarm bells that were going off after a long time of not going up and doing live shows, but yeah, zoom helped with that as well. Um, I think I definitely still prefer a live show to a zoom show, Mm -hmm. Um, but I I definitely was, you know, was like, yeah, let's do some zoom shows. That'd be great. (laughs) Yeah. I kind of, I honestly, like, I I mean, in a way I did feel kind of bad for extroverts, but in another way I was like, haha now you know how like we feel like living in your world because like (laughs) like you like it's an extrovert especially like america you know it's an extroverted country and then especially if you're doing entertainment you're like me i have to force myself to be extroverted to do the things i like acting and hosting and it's very exhausting very draining like i enjoy it but at the end i'm like i need to be alone like please (laughs) like i finished the job like now i just need to be alone and even as a child i'm like from an extroverted family so i was like the weird one and my parents (laughs) always forcing me to like talk to people and i'm like i don't want to so it's kind of nice that now like you know we've had to live in their world and now they have to live in our world and i'm like it's just for a little bit okay you don't have to do it your re- the rest of your lives like we had to do it so yeah i kind of like reveled in it i totally get that like i spent so much time trying to adapt to being extroverted you know and in, in in ways that i do enjoy but like the best way to describe it for me is like if i don't have time like completely alone by myself 
uh, just like diving into this thinking, just like being in my own head. Like I won't mm -hmm. feel like myself, you know, like I will, yeah. I will lose myself. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's the thing is <clears throat> needing that time alone to recharge. And even with like the zoom mics, like I tried, you know, yeah, like hustle, you know, try to do as many as you can. And one time I went crazy and I did one like pretty much every day. And then one day I did three and one day that was too much for me. I, was, I felt so drained, even though I'm in my house, like in my own place. I didn't have to go anywhere. But after three, I'm like, I'm so tired. Like it was only like yeah. five minutes set. So it's just like 15 minutes. I'm like, that's it for me. Like I'm never doing three in a row again. It's too much. So yeah, but I think some people, I can tell kind of who the extroverted comedians are because they're like on every mic and I'm like, I can never do that. Like I need a break. Like you're on every single one. I can't. I'm sorry. That's, that's yeah. yeah. I definitely like. I want to do as much as I can, but it is it does it is draining. Um, mm -hmm. But I try to get to that headspace of like where it's just like it's no big deal. You know, it's like you just go on, you get the time in, and you know, move on after that. But I don't know. I, I, it's, it's hard for me to do that. You know, mm -hmm. I tend to expend a lot of mental energy whatever I do if it's around people. Yeah, for sure. Real quick. I'm going to I'm I am I am going to talk a little bit about kind of the like the advantages of being an introvert in terms of doing comedy. So, before we get into that, can you uh both real quick just talk about maybe what got you into it and what you like to talk about in your comedy? Yeah, I can yeah, I can start. Uh you look ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I get that a lot. Ready. Like I'm like ready to, to dive in. Uh <laughs> I'm muted and I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> So it got me into comedy. I essentially, I have a friend that was my college roommate's um, brother's friend that uh, this friend circle that I was tied into in college and um, even before then, because my college roommate is also Indian American. And uh, so we have a pretty tight knit Indian American community uh, in, um, you know, what, where I live in the DMV. And um the thing is the vast majority of us are like introverted and if not like very, very introverted, but we had this friend in our friend circle. Uh, he was one of the very few non Indian friends in our friend circle. He's, he's actually Colombian. And um, so we would all hang out, but some of the functions that we had, like some of the, a lot of us are Hindu as well. Uh, so some of the social events we had, like, you know, we, we would invite our, our friend, his name is uh, Camilo Diaz. He's a, he's a comedian uh, now, very well experienced. Um, so uh, I think like Camilo, like he needed an outlet. So he was secretly doing comedy for like eight months and got really, really good. And then he surprised us by like hosting his own shows and hosting his own open mics. Um, and then, and so this was like in 2016. So I would attend my friend Camilo shows uh, for, for like ab about a year. Uh, and then my friend group, like, uh, identified me as maybe someone that could, like, give it a shot, give it a try. So essentially, um, after I quit my first job in um, the summer of 2019, um, one of our friends in our friend circle had a wedding, you know, got married. Uh, and they all kind of, like, acknowledged, like, to me, like, hey, mood it. When are you going to give that first open mic a try? Like, when are you going to give it a shot? I was like, hmm, I guess I don't have an excuse now because, like, I I'm in this, like, sabbatical, like, in between jobs. Uh, and so I did. I went to Camilo Diaz's uh, open mic and it was I had like this very nice cushion of like of a support group. Like I had my friends show up. Um, mm -hmm. I'm literally like lifelong friends with the host of that open mic. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so I think like highlighting like the logistics of it, like the logistics of my entry into comedy is what really like sustained everything. And then I could like take my stories and life experiences and tailor it. Um, in this particular medium that is comedy. Cause I've always been like an expressive person, but I've struggled to like find a community or a particular art form that, uh, uh, you know, that I like resonate with. Uh, but I think the logistics fell in place uh, because of, uh, you know, my friend Camilo uh, in, in terms of stand up comedy in particular as a, as a way of expressing myself. So, yeah. Nice. And Parker? Bad breakup. Oh, okay. Really? Bad breakup. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Can you elaborate a little bit more about how that affected you? Uh, <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah, 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 I can. Uh, you know, like, all right, so a little pretext. 
I um I actually tried uh, comedy at the Richmond Funny Bone, like I guess like eight, seven or eight years ago. And then uh, I bombed so hard I didn't go back and try it for another five years. But it was always like something oh. I tried, I wanted to do, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know I just kind of went about my life and you know got a, a, a you know pretty good job. Thought like a relationship would work out and it didn't. And that just gave me like the effort kind of attitude where it was like nothing really mattered except for what I wanted to do. So. Um, that helped kind of, uh, you know, get comedy going for me and it, and it helped me like get over mm-hmm. it. You know, I think, uh, comedy is kind of a way for people to shrug off the things that are very serious to you, you know, um, to kind of make light and have fun with the things that are like really tough, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, so I think that's part of what, you know, got it into my blood. So I don't think I could quit now. Oh, okay. Nice. It's just, it it's it helps me too much so Mm -hmm. so i'm still doing bits about that breakup too so like it's i'm still milking it yeah still keep keep going keep going i'll never get uh, over that relationship (laughs) yeah that's kind of how i started too is it wasn't a bad breakup it was just this dude who ghosted me (laughs) not you (laughs) another dude (laughs) so i'm very (laughs) sensitive to being ghosted (laughs) Oh boy. So, um, <laughs> that's why I kind of um, will notice when someone ghosts me and <clears throat> I started like kind of I had I'd always wanted to try it and I had actually dated stand-up comedians before I was always a supportive girlfriend going to their shows yay oh, wow. um, but I I always like and I've always been a fan like of stand-up comedy since I was a kid like Saturday nights in high school everyone's like out partying I'm like watching Comedy Central Presents <laughs> that's my Saturday night um and I yeah I just always always loved stand of comedy but I never like felt I could do it just because I was kind of ah, shy so and stuff. this time you were like yeah, I'm getting this is my thing yeah because I was like so mad about this guy ghosting me <laughs> because it was going it was like one of those things where it's like going so well and then it's just nothing and I'm like I, hmm. I'd rather just like know the reason why like instead of just leaving me with like wondering you know so I was like so mad about it and I started yeah. making jokes about it and I had already had some jokes that I had written before like I, I, I had them in my phone like just in case I ever try stand-up comedy and then I'm like you know what I'm yes. gonna do it like we have like look, why not you know and exactly yeah, that's how that's I started what it so yeah. use a uh, heartbreak to fuel your dreams or your art and stuff so oh and i'm just just as a favor for anyone who's <laughs> it listening takes some heartbreak okay. or a colombian <laughs> to get yeah. you into comedy <laughs> um and <laughs> um i actually have dated a colombian he cheated on me so that's great no, i'm just kidding not they're oh, not all like that i i have <laughs> but okay wait, wait, wait. so Mooded, what's just... your what's your colombian friend's name again <laughs> no <laughs> no Camilo, yes. Colombians are they? <laughs> no. He's a very no. <laughs> yeah, definitely not him. So, like, yeah. Um, I just want to ask a favor to anyone who's listening, okay? Because this guy that ghosted me, he has a YouTube channel, and I have a YouTube channel too. So if you could subscribe to mine, so I could pass surpass his amount of subscribers, that would make me yeah, feel better. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so that's right. That's so I think I'm, I think I'm like forty away from passing. Him, so if you yeah, guys can right. subscribe and throw his help name, me out. throw his channel out. <laughs> No. Name him, name him, no, and shame him. Let's all go there no, and troll no, no, his, no. troll his channel. <laughs> I don't need you guys to harass him. It's not that much, not that much. Help, out, help a girl out, okay? That would just be better. Um, so yeah. Um, anyway, so <laughs> we got through that. Um, so <laughs> I found. <laughs> so I just. <laughs> this is what happens when you drink. Okay, it's the I'm not sure. serum. I'm not sure we've gotten through it yet. I think we might might have to revisit that. (laughs) (laughs) So I found this really cool article about just like the advantages uh, that both introverts and extroverts have in terms of comedy. You know, we have different strengths. So just because you're an introvert doesn't mean you're like horrible because I've seen a lot of introverts (laughs) like, oh, I hate being an introvert. I hate it. And I, I see, I mean, I used to feel like that when I was younger, but now like I... I like being an introvert. Um, we do have a lot of like great qualities. They're just different. We have different strengths. So just because like there's not one good or wrong way to be. Okay. So in terms of comedy, okay, introverts are often 
more thoughtful, reflective, and observant. They also pay closer attention to details, so that's why we think everyone probably hates us or is ignoring us like I do. <laughs> um, and that makes for very relatable comedy writing, okay? So yeah. there's actually a comedian. Uh, his name is Luke LaCoy. I don't know. I haven't heard of him, but like I just you know saw him here mentioned in the article. But he actually got into stand-up comedy and improv so that he could overcome his social anxiety and that's something that i also have too um Mm -hmm. and but he's actually like so shy he as of the writing of this article he doesn't have one video of him doing stand-up on the internet so he's very i guess self-conscious um and the article also says that a lot of comedians describe themselves as having some sort of social anxiety and introverts are also best at turning semen- seemingly normal relationship issues into comedy uh, because they overthink them and see them in a light that we probably have never noticed before. So that Don't tell me that know. overthinking is a strength. <laughs> like, <laughs> I already do it too much. <laughs> um, I don't need an excuse to keep overthinking. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, it's it's a way to torture ourselves, I think. So that's mm-hmm. definitely something I do. But um, you know, we see the details. Okay, I think we need a we need both extroverts and introverts in the world. So I'm I definitely am someone who looks at the details. I'll notice things that nobody else will. Like, like something on uh, like for example, like something on someone's shirt, like. I've, I've worked on, like, film and TV sets where, like, the actor, I noticed, like, something was messed up with their shirt. And I'm like, why does anyone, like, not fix that? Like, oh, my God. Like, mm-hmm. I want to go over and fix it. And, like, nobody is doing it. I'm just like, oh, my gosh, really bothers me. And I'm like, okay, so you're going to let him go on camera like that. Like, hello. Like, I should be doing wardrobe right now because nobody is noticing that. And, um, yeah, the overthinking is, like, it's a little torturous. But there are some other... <laughs> Yeah. Good qualities of being an introvert. Um, do you guys have anything else to say about, like, you know, being more thoughtful, reflective, um, things that might have helped you in terms of your comedy? Or I think uh, be- being an introvert, like, I, I've i been told, like, by other comedians that I kind of, um, I, if I'm at an open mic, um, I will st- stay to watch uh, or I'll leave, but I usually, I rarely stay to socialize. Um, and, and a lot of comedians, like um, they don't call me out for it, but it's something they notice because like they, their justification or argument is that they stay to socialize um, both to have fun, but also to, I guess, network and maybe talk about like a potential booking down the road. Uh, but for me, it's like, I think that's where my limit comes into play in terms of you know, just energy and how to use it um, wisely. Um, I really like the conceptualization of like energy and defining uh, introverts versus extroverts because, uh, you know, like we've all established, like we recharge um, sort of when we're with ourselves and usually like only with ourselves. Uh, And so, so that like energy um, element, I really appreciate, but, but yeah, uh, going back to, I think the biggest, thing that has me stick out as a comedian is that I'm never at the bar or venue to socialize. I'm either watching or waiting for my set um, or, or I kind of uh, leave. So that's sort of my thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you Parker. I'm also pr- a pretty frequent uh, go outside, you know, and just like talk to one or two people, you know, for, mm-hmm. during like a comedy show or like an open mic. Yeah, that happens a lot. It's hard for me to actually stay in like a room with like a whole bunch going on. Um, (coughs) Sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. No, I just had my throat. I had to clear my throat. (laughs) Sorry. Okay, cool. No problem. (laughs) Yeah, Anais. Anais? Anais. Anais. Okay, I got it. And one of those two tries. Yeah. I, I like to say, like, uh, let's create some face palm moments, <laughs> like, because I know, like, with overthinking, like, ev- like cringy moments for me is like something I'm gonna be bringing up for like the next seven to eighteen years, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like how I like to phrase it. Mm-hmm. What was the original question, though? So just like your th- any, if you had any thoughts about like what I read about you, some of the things that, like, introvert qualities that might help. These are not yeah. all the strengths of an introvert, but things that might help in terms of comedy. 
Yeah, so. sometimes I think, um, or, or something that I use is, uh, it's hard to even describe, but it's just like connecting to, like, connecting to some vision of, of something that's, that could happen or like something artful that I'm trying to create uh, in comedy. And yeah, I'm not doing a very good job of describing it, but I don't know. There's just, there's, there's a way that I go about like in my creative process where I want to create something that is, that I can set on like a pedestal and like, it'll be there forever. And I'm going to hone it. That's why I like the craft of like crafting a joke or something like this is something I'm like, I'm crystallizing into like its best form, you know, and I'm going to, I'm going to set it on this thing and finish it where like people can connect to it forever, you know? So that's, that, that kind of emotion that I'm bringing into the creative process is something that I, I enjoy. Um, and it's something that I enjoy in other mediums like music as well uh, and things mm. like that. Versus like, I don't know, maybe like the jazz like approach to creation where it's kind of mm. like this improvisational thing that happens in a moment and then it's over, you know, there's mm -hmm. just kind of a different feeling to that for me. Um, okay. Okay, so I have to ask you guys, um, I don't feel comfortable with, because I see a lot of comedians do this, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, it's just something I don't feel comfortable doing, maybe later, I don't know, just, uh, how do you, do you guys do, like, crowd work, and do you feel, he ghosted us. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> okay, so hopefully we'll give him time to come back. <laughs> yeah, probably his phone died. Um, so, what um since you're here uh, i was gonna ask it yeah. anyway so do you feel comfortable doing crowd work do you do it or no yeah not really um i think i, I don't really like it i feel like i sh i feel like at some point someone's gonna tell me to try it i don't know who uh, you know just in the comedy mm -hmm. community but uh yeah I, I think i have a predictable response which is like it's it's not my go-to um i think something that maybe people don't um, maybe something that does not come up in conversation. Another reason why I do not like crowd work is because um, I like to have uh, good tapes in my archive. Mm -hmm. And like, so I, I literally just set up my phone and like a simple tripod. Um, mm -hmm. Eventually I'll invest in like, you know, more fancier camera with um, nice microphone, all that stuff. Um, but until then it's like, I don't know, for me, crowd work doesn't make for like a nice uh, tape. Um, I think. Mm -hmm for like a snippet oh you're back parker how's it going hey sorry ghosting us again <laughs> you're triggering me okay with this all this ghosting I'm, sorry. I'm, not, I'm not trying to give you ptsd or anything like that <laughs> okay. i'm not trying to See derail mood it's story yeah oh no no worries yeah we're, we're talking about crowd work and and i was saying that like i'm not really um oh. it's not something i'm drawn to uh i i feel like I feel like down the road, I might be obligated to give it a try. Like some, I don't know, comedian leader booker is going to like make me do it. But uh, crowd work is not my go-to, um, not surprisingly, just because, you know, like being introverted and I kind of want to mm. uh, uh, kind of commit to my own set and maybe riff internally, but to riff off of someone in the crowd. Um, there are not a lot of like, a lot of my stuff is cultural. So uh mm. There, there are a couple of like Indian American comedians, but I very rarely see like um, Indians in the audience. And it's just uh, that's I feel like that would be kind of a necessary element for crowd work to work for me. Um, and the last thing I was saying is that um, I, I tape all of my sets using a, a small portable tripod in my phone. Um, the crowd work like it just I, I feel like it, it kind of sounds disruptive in the grand scheme of a, a set tape um that might be a controversial opinion but for now in the near future i yeah crowd work is just not quite my go-to thing uh not yet at least so <laughs> all right yeah so parker i was asking if you do crowd work and how do you feel about it terrified of crowd work um and for that reason i do it or i try um i don't try it like other you know comedians that seem like they're you know made for it uh but I do, I do want to get good, good at crowd work. I want to try it more because um, it's something. It's just so scary for me. And I've had moments where I've I've done okay, 
you know, at it where you get to get to that moment where it's just kind of fun and like you're in the moment and you're just kind of quickly moving on with whatever's happening in the environment. And that's not a muscle I get to flex so often, you know, I'm like a perseverator. I like to think about and turn over a thought like over and over again, you know? So, um, that I feel like that's one of my strengths is to like hone something, you know, and refine something. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I also want to work on my weaknesses, which is, you know, really being in the moment and very like, uh, agile, like mm -hmm. agile in terms of like, thinking of the next thing and just rolling, you know, with whatever's happening. So nice. I feel like it's definitely more something that maybe like extroverts are probably like naturally better at. And I've seen like, I've mm -hmm. never done it just because I'm like, kind of scared. I'm scared. I'm one of those people that like, I'll accidentally offend someone when I didn't mean to. I'm like, I'm so sorry. And I feel like I would do that if I was doing crowd work. I would just like accidentally offend everyone. I'm like, no, I'm so sorry. That was not my intention. So um, maybe yeah. once I feel maybe more comfortable, maybe I have more experience doing it or something. <coughs> and also depending on the crowd, if it's maybe a crowd where I feel like maybe I gel with them a little bit better and it's kind of more maybe around my age or something maybe we have more in common may all feel mm. more comfortable but mm. i also you know just i guess being my introverted self i like to kind of think things through before i say them so that's why i think you know things that i've worked on and written on i feel more comfortable saying but it would be nice to kind of yeah get better at it but i just yeah. don't want to accidentally offend people because yeah, that's, I that's a, do that. like, that's a big fear for me, too. And I've definitely, like, made a fool of myself, you know, and I've, I've had to, like, forgive myself for that. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in, like, figuring out, like, is it going to, like, how do you play to your strengths kind of thing? You know what I mean? Mm hmm all right, so um, for you extroverts listening, don't feel like I left y'all. Let's talk about some of the uh, qualities of extroverts that will help them doing comedy. Extroverts' obvious advantage is a natural ability and enjoyment of talking to strangers. So that kind of relates to crowd work. And it helps them become better at performing quicker. Uh, they seek out a large variety of social situations and environments, which often leads to good writing material. So basically, you guys are just more comfortable with people looking at you and talking to a lot of people. And me as an introvert, I'm like, please don't look at me. <laughs> As soon as I get off stage, I'm like, okay, don't stop. Like, I don't need you to stare at me. Um, so there you go. You guys are just like more comfortable at it. So those are some of the strengths. We we can all be, we can all co uh, coexist together and both be comedians. Okay, all kinds. So I forgot to ask you guys this earlier, but what are some of your favorite comedians? I'm really curious. I would say uh, Russell Peters. He was the most influential uh, comedian. I was around, I was 13 when I discovered, uh, I literally discovered YouTube as a website from like Russell Peters's videos. Like, I think there's some kind of like relationship or historical coinciding thing with R Russell Peters is like, um, videos and the onset of YouTube. Uh, so, uh, Russell Peters and, um, I was binge watching, uh, George Carlin, uh, highlights last night. So, uh, and I was blown away. Um, so I think those two have been on my mind lately. Yeah. Nice. What you, Parker? It's a little controversial to bring this guy up right now, but uh, Louis C.K. is one of my comedic heroes. Um, uh, yeah, I just really like, I, sometimes I wonder if he has, you know, like a, a big introverted strain in him, just in the kind of stuff that he, some of the subject matter of his, of his uh, comedy. Um, mm -hmm. So he's one of them. He's he's kind of one person that I, I think is very good about taking just like something very mundane and turning it into, a, you know, absurd and, you know, making it funny. Um, yeah. Also, uh, Nate Brigazzi, like I, I'm, I'm in like, I don't know, I'm kind of infatuated with Nate Brigazzi right now. Oh, OK. I have to check he's kind of, him and Russell Peters out because I haven't yeah, heard of him. Tennessee them. kid. It's great. Oh, OK. Awesome. Great special. So my two favorite ones, which is kind of funny because like their per personality wise are like completely like opposite, but um, I like them because they're both very pretty good at like one liners. So I love Dimitri Martin. 
Um, oh yeah, <laughs> I love him so much. I've seen him live a few times, and I've met him. He's one of the nicest people ever. And my other favorite one, who's also super nice off stage, is Anthony Jesselnik. Um, and his stuff is very different from Dimitri the Tone, but they're I, I admire both of them because they're both very good at like one liners, and that's something that I'm not good at, and I would love to be at that point. Um, so definitely both of them and even though they're on on stage personas are very different off stage they're both super super nice i was wondering before you do any performances either in person or on zoom do you have any like rituals or how do you like get ready before you perform let's start with let's let's change it up a a little bit let's start with parker before he ghosts us again so (laughs) (laughs) just kind of keeping me on the line (laughs) What a great running gag. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. Like you you were like you're like, have you guys ever ghosted anybody? I didn't know it was a trap. Like I didn't know you were like <laughs> Yeah. I'm like I didn't know you you had PTSD from being ghosted. You're like, either of you assholes ever ghosted anybody? <laughs> like, let's just get that out at the beginning. So <laughs> I'm never gonna let you live it down. <laughs> never. <laughs> Things weren't going well, by the way. It wasn't like something that was going well. <laughs> like I'm like on jury. I like I'm on trial right now. I'm like protecting myself. Um, uh, oh, rituals, rituals. Mm-hmm. Um, or just how do you prepare? I know. I I don't. I just uh, mm. I prepare by like by like going like I don't shouldn't go out tonight. I don't need to go out tonight. I don't need to go anywhere. I don't need to do anything ever. <laughs> and then forcing myself to do it. That's pretty much my ritual and just hurling wow. myself into things. Yeah. Wow, okay. What about you, Mood it? Yeah, uh I think it's nothing too fancy. Uh if it's if it's like a anything above an open mic uh like a, you know, showcase or whatever it may be, then uh, I find time during the day, um, or if it's a long drive, to like run through my set. Um, some things that I, I like keep the wardrobe, like the the clothes, like I plan that in advance. Um, I don't really do this for open mics, just because I I hit them very frequently and I just kind of uh, mm-hmm. go as I am type of thing. Um, for the longest time, like I was like obsessed with not drinking alcohol before getting on stage um but i kind of want to try it now just um just to prepare for like a situation like let's see now that you did a podcast with with both of us winos (laughs) it's pretty fun actually (laughs) no yeah i i want to try i want to try it now uh just because like what if like what if i'm out of town and like i had a dinner party that had nothing to do with comedy and i and i was drinking alcohol but then i had to do a Mm. comedy set uh, after and I would have to learn how to just be able to perform with alcohol in my system. Um, no, like even if it wasn't like my intention, like so I kind of want to try it to like just have the to cover my bases, you know. Um, okay. Yeah, it's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> so. It's tricky. You never like it's 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 a it's dangerous because you don't want to rely, you know, on being buzzed right. in order to like get that, you know. You want to be able to rely on your own headspace, you know, and just right. adapt to yeah. you know yourself. But yeah. Yeah. But other than that, it's it's nothing too fancy. It's just like you know, if it's if it's something above an open mic, um, then I'll just run through the set like in front of a mirror, in front of my phone, or or in the long drive, um, have my wardrobe planned, um, simple stuff, and then um, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Nice. So. I'm a I'm and kind of similar to where I'll go over my set because I'm very like I don't know. I just like to prepare just. Because I know I get nervous sometimes, especially like maybe not Zoom mics as, as much, but like when it's in person, um, I know I get kind of nervous and sometimes I'll forget things if I get really nervous. So I just like to over prepare so that won't happen. And I also have a rule of not drinking before a show, even though I always want to. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I guess I get really anxious. I'm like, I want to drink so bad, but I don't want to. Like, because if I mess up or something, I don't want to have to blame it like have to i don't want to blame it on the alcohol be like i want to take responsibility it's like okay i messed up you know um 
and you can blame it on COVID. Everyone does. Now, you know? <laughs> okay. You can use blame that. it on COVID. But <laughs> usually, immediately after I go, I'll be like, "Where's my drink? <laughs> like, I can have a drink now." And I usually go to the bathroom like a lot. Like, I don't know why, but after I per- before I perform, even for a Zoom show, I always have to go to the bathroom like every minute so i don't know if it's nerves or something (laughs) but i i definitely need to be alone um if there's other like if it's an in-person one and there's other comedians performing they want to like talk and Mm -hmm. stuff i'm like i kind of can't right now until after i go then i can talk um but before i prefer to just kind of be in the zone be alone absolutely i totally shut down like yeah and the like the two to three people that are before me on the set list like I I don't hear a word that they say, mm-hmm. but and I always tell them like so they don't think I'm like being mean. I'm like no, it's just like once mm. I go up, I'll be good. I can talk. It's just before this is my my process, I guess. Exactly. Okay, so how do you guys feel after the Zoom mics? Because for me, I just like I feel exhausted. <laughs> like I want to take a nap. I want to have a drink. I need to go talk to my therapist. It's just like a lot of emotions. <laughs> so how do you guys cry. feel? <laughs> yeah, I need to cry. So, how do you guys feel after? Uh, you need to watch you them queer eye and cry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Depending on what happens, like if I do the thing I set out to do, like if I, you know, if I go to a mic and I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm just, I'm not gonna get nervous. I'm not gonna like go into some other comic's voice or a fake voice. I'm just gonna be real. You know, that's my goal, and I achieve it. I feel great. Especially, I mean, if I get laughs too. I mean, if you, I'll, I'll feel amazing you know, for like mm-hmm. the next, you know, two or three days. But yeah, if, if, if I get nervous and like it gets the better of me, like I, I won't feel good. Like I'll, it'll be a rough couple of days for sure. Okay. But, okay. Yeah. but I totally get what you're saying about like, talk to me after. Cause like, if I, like, if I do well, if I do what I want to do, uh, like if I do what I set out to do, like afterward, I'm, I'm all there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But beforehand, I just, I won't hear. I just, I can't listen. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. After, uh, I think zoom mics thankfully are less, um, severe than like, uh, like the aftermath of, of, a like a live show or mic. Um, mm-hmm. they're, you know, they're both draining, uh, thankfully zoom, not as much, uh, but you know, uh, doing any kind of live comedy expends energy. And, um, I think that, Something I've been struggling with is I need to better discipline myself about going to bed on time um, and not like planning to get things done between coming home or, or wrapping up a Zoom show um, at night and then going to bed. Uh, because for me, then like my mind and body are kind of disconnected because my body's tired. Uh, my mm-hmm. mind may want to get more things done. Um, uh, and so for me, it's like, um, it's more of a, like an energy management and like sleep schedule management issue of like after shows, like, um, preach, preach. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Cause even, even when shows go well, it's like, I don't necessarily want to go to bed. Um, some, you know, sometimes I want to ride that wave of like, yeah, things are going well. I want to create more. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, 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 uh, yeah, it's, it's this, um, struggle and adventure of, uh, optimizing my sleep schedule and managing my energy levels, um, after, after shows and the next day and whatnot. So, yeah. As I say in Queer Eye, self-care, self-care is a really big thing on Queer Eye. So, (laughs) um, let's see, we're almost done. We're almost done. Are you going to evaluate our, our clothes? (laughs) No. No. Does it come to the, the time where you? <laughs> no. Yes, I'm going to change your life. I, I do right want to now, say but... though that your. Yes. Your, <laughs> your plants look very well. I can tell you put a lot of thought into that. You got like the Thank nice you. white plant. It's what I learned from yeah, Queer Eye. Everyone. You can learn so much from it about your space, your wardrobe. You know, working on yourself, cooking. Mm-hmm. Um, Crying. You know. Yeah, crying. <laughs> Lots of crying. Um, the the guy that cries the most on Queer Eye, like everyone thinks he's INFP. <laughs> and we're like, he's INFP. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, probably. <laughs> Cause he cries on every episode. The other one's like once in a while, but he cries guaranteed on every episode. I'm like, yeah, it's probably an INFP. Um so, you know, Parker, like a typical introvert, you did 
noticed some details. Okay, he noticed my plants. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. <laughs> that kind of got me wondering. Okay, so when it comes to, um, because I was talking about this to somebody earlier, like when it comes to dating, do you prefer dating more extroverted people because they kind of balance you out, or do you prefer dating like fellow introverts? So whoever wants to go first. I don't know, man. Like, I think that I, I like dating extroverts. Um, but man, the, uh, the, uh, the catalyst to this whole experience of, um, of comedy was a big extrovert and that was a nightmare. So <laughs> I think I might, uh, I, I think I might, um, look for some people that are more like myself, I think is, it's probably my, my next move. So all right, moon it. Yeah, I think um, introverts. I, I would be more drawn to introverts. I, but I also wonder, like, I, uh, I had this impression that, uh, well, I can expand on that. Like, I think introverts can maybe understand more where I'm coming from and maybe uh, be better listeners, um, uh, and and perhaps like receive my, I don't know stories and experiences with like um, open ears, maybe without, without like um, immediately uh, providing like insight or judgment. Uh, But I don't know that I've ever, yeah, I I, I don't know what it would be like to date an extrovert. Um, So that's like pretty new to me, but I'm a little bit, I would be a little bit like just, uh, a little no, no. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Interesting. All right. <clears throat> so I have dated mostly extroverts, but I think like my dream <laughs> is to probably be with another introvert just because one of the biggest problems, um, well, I mean, I, there's been problems in every relationship, obviously, but one of like the more consistent problems for me was they never... They would always get mad when I wanted to be alone and they couldn't understand that. It's just like, I need to be alone. And they would think it's like, oh, it means you don't love me. I'm like, no, don't take it personally. It has nothing to do with you. That's just how I operate. And they couldn't understand that. So introverts obviously do. So it'd be nice to not have to constantly explain myself. Um, But I mean, if there's an extrovert who's understanding of that, that would be cool. But most of the ones that I've dated don't they take it personally so um but the only thing is is about like introverts dating other introverts is like it usually never happens because they're too scared to like tell each other (laughs) that they're interested it's like um so then (laughs) it it never happens because it's happened to me several times where i'll like someone and i assume like they hate me or they don't like me and so nothing happens and then i'll find out later they'll be like oh i used to like you i'm like (gasps) why did you say say anything anything? (laughs) i liked you too um so that's something i think us introverts probably need to like get better at um but yeah, that's just like the hurdle I think with like introverts right. dating other introverts is like no one wants to like make like a move or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dating an extrovert will get you out of your comfort zone, so that's that's like a plus, you know. Mm-hmm. But like also, I always feel guilty. Like I always feel guilty for doing the introverted thing, you know. Even if it's like you know well understood, and they're like, no, it's fine. Like I can still like, like I can still see the, you know, I sense the 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 judgment you know like the disappointment especially for those like long introverted like kind of seasons you know where it's like i'm kind of just digging being you know doing the introverted thing yeah and i'm i would be so like i would actually try to push my exes to like do things away from me i'm like go hang out with your friends (laughs) please go do things that have nothing to do with me and they're like no i want to be with you i'm like i want to be alone (laughs) i need some time please go hang out with your friends and (laughs) They, they ghost wouldn't. me, please. So, yeah, I'm ghost like, please me ghost me for once. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. At that point, yes. Please ghost me. Um. All right. So I want. I'm curious about this because you know we are all multifaceted human beings. So, what are some non-comedy hobbies that you guys both have? So, we'll start with Moodit. What's a non-comedy cool. hobby that you have? 
I, I play soccer and I, I like, uh, I spend time alone with like the soccer ball to do tricks and stuff. Um, so like the freestyle um, soccer tricks and juggling. Uh, and that's, that's, that tends to be very different from like playing in an actual game. And I think that's very reflective of like the introvert extrovert dynamic. Um, and I also like writing. Uh, I freelance write uh, for um, mental health advocacy. Uh, so like I volunteer for a South Asian cool. Um, yeah, mental health advocacy group. And yeah, my, my last article was with a, uh, a group, um, in uh, California called the mighty, which is like a, the mighty covers all health, um, indications. And so they have like a mental health umbrella. So I wrote, um, an article describing some of my like mental health experiences. Uh, so, so writing, uh, on, on advocacy is, is a big uh, hobby of mine as well. So. <laughs> Awesome, man. Um, yeah, I like camping. That's where I am right now. You can Ooh. see beautiful campsite going on. Nice. Um, hiking. I actually just got done with an extreme hike. That was really fun. Um, I almost didn't make it today because uh, I, I actually I actually lost my phone while I was hiking. <laughs> it fell out of one of my pockets. So I, uh, phoneless uh, bonus to that is that my uh, credit card and my ID were in that phone. Um, Cause I lost my wallet. I lost my wallet and I was like, well, I know how to never do this again. I'll keep them both in my phone. So then I lost my phone. Oh. Um, so oh. I don't know what happens next, but you know. Are you using happens. someone else's phone now? Or? Yeah, I'm, I'm on my sister's phone. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yep. Um, <laughs> other than that, you know, I teach music. So I like play piano drums and stuff so it's another one nice. another creative outlet i do too i was actually gonna show my this is my two-in-one i like to paint and i like music too thanks Claire. whoa cool so i made these nice treble i'm really proud of them uh, i think nice. they look really cute as you can see i like certain colors i'm just saying you like blue you know yeah uh, <laughs> um and I, these are on cardboard because I like to reuse things. So if there's cool. extra cardboard, I'll paint them. Uh, I also like to play um, piano and drums. I started learning that. What? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I had to get, sell my old set when I moved from L.A., but I've been wanting to get a new one. But it's just the money, you know, I'm trying to save. But I also want to play at the same time, so it's kind of conflicting. Yeah. But luckily, we have a piano A new here. drum set? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I my I loved my old one. It was so beautiful. It was blue. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I said, you like, know, I like blue. I play the blues on the piano. <laughs> blues. I like blue by blue dabba dee dabba da by Eiffel sixty five. Um, I do have that album. I'm not ashamed. That is one of the first CDs I ever bought. Um, it's called Euro Pop by Eiffel sixty five. It's really good. They have a song on there about PlayStation called My Console. Just saying, check it out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, and yeah, just like uh, doing making content for YouTube, filmmaking. So we are not just a one dimensional. Um, right. And one last question, because I like to kind of try to go in a little bit deep. Let's see if I can make anyone cry other than Let's just me. <laughs> I'm going to go all, all ba Barbara Walters, <laughs> Diane Sawyer. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, <laughs> together, <we did. laughs> so what is something you wish more people knew about you? Ooh, um, that's, I, I really like that question. I think I, I wish people knew that um, I'll pick one. So there, there are several things, but I'll pick one. One is that, so I'm vegetarian, but it's not by like choice. Um, I have tried bits and pieces of meat before at like um, social events and stuff. Uh, but it just, it just doesn't register to me like deeply, like psychologically as like food. And I don't know if it's like complicated because um, my parents are, uh, my mom especially is a very strict Hindu. Um, so like she forbid me from eating meat. Um, I think like, I think, I don't know, like when I, turned 18 and I went off to college like I could have like eaten meat but uh it's it's just so complicated so uh and I don't really have like um strong beliefs 
that that usually like like tied to vegetarianism like uh like yeah i i care for the environment but is that why i'm vegetarian not really um i, I care about animals too but is is that why i'm vegetarian well no it's just it's just like my mom ingrained it into me so it's like it's almost like a an allergy or like an intolerance like there's lactose intolerance so for me it's more of like a meat intolerance uh so mm -hmm. i think I, I wish people um yeah, I wish I wish people knew like the details of, of that, like my relationship with vegetarianism and how it was kind of forced. And I, I don't know how to get myself out of it. I don't know if I want to or need to. It's just kind of complicated. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. How about you, Dude, Patrick? I think I totally get that. I, I, I like um, I think like sometimes when you're like the values that you were like in like that were instilled in you, you know, when you were young by your parents, you know, it's like, it's a very complicated, like really like intertangled, like web of yeah. the why you do something or continue to do something into your adulthood. I, I have kind of a, like a similar relationship to religion and like kind of the values that I was brought in as well, brought, brought up in as well. Right. Yeah. That you, you don't always have like control or understand all the reasons why, you know, exactly. like you, think you know something is the right way to go or you right. know feel even more importantly feel it right um so let's see oh something that i wish people knew about me um i don't really know like i try to be i'm trying in this season of my life to be more of like an open book um can you guys hear that clicking by any chance is that a sprinkler a little bit sounds yeah. like a sprinkler oh, dang it <laughs> dang it i was trying to ignore it <laughs> Okay, there we go. Um, I don't know. You know, like I. You know what? No, I'm just. I'm just gonna give it no. Oh, like okay. the things I'm comfortable with people knowing what they know about me, and I'll if they want to know more, they can ask, and I'm cool. I'm feel free to I'm stalk actually, him. <laughs> <laughs> He's asking for my only, to stalk him. <laughs> my only fans uh, link will be in the description. <laughs> Uh, so if you want to know more about me, you can know a whole lot um, after this uh, after this podcast. Yeah, hopefully he doesn't ghost you guys. So <laughs> you him. will be ghosted. My my uh, my screen name is Ghostface. Um, so <laughs> that's that's kind of my thing, you know. That's my OnlyFans. I actually don't take off my clothes. I just actually uh, I get really close emotionally with you and then ghost you. That's kind of um, that's the worst. That's, that's the worst. worst. <laughs> that's the worst. No. There, I don't know if you guys heard of this study, but there, they did a study where they asked men and women what would hurt the most, being cheated on just physically or emotionally. And most women said emotionally, which is true for me, and most men said physically. But what do you guys think? For What would hurt you more, physically or emotional cheating? Physical. Okay. Yeah, I mean same yeah, I, yeah exactly typical like, I, guys <laughs> i'm just kidding right i mean but that's the, yeah that's the thing i, I just <laughs> want to say like I, like i didn't you know it's like i didn't uh sign up to be like you know born into like this male like typical like but it's just it's just the wiring i can't i can't escape the way my mind and body are wired and i'm you know like it's just it's just i would be lying if 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 i if i said you know the, the flip uh, so yeah. just to keep it real yeah yeah good <laughs> good yes keep it real all right so one last thing one last thing okay we're done with the questions okay uh, so now we have to end it on a funner note the funner is that even a word i don't know more <laughs> fun no so i got some memes intp infp memes and we're gonna i just want to get your thoughts and reactions on them so i'm just gonna share them real quick and then cool. we're gonna end the show all right uh let me know if you guys agree with these memes or not this one oh sorry first uh meme is intp let's see Woo what this meme says intp wondering if she likes him and her <laughs> <laughs> no that's totally true there's that every every single I always wonder if every single bartender likes me. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm totally that guy. But like, I think in this meme, it's saying that she's real, being really obvious and you're like, you don't notice. That's, I think that's what they're saying. That's what I'm getting. Oh, from really? Them. Okay. Well, no, yeah. I'm wise already outed myself as being. <laughs> so you don't like, so if you've never had it where a girl's being really obvious and you don't notice that she, she likes you. No, that, that has happened. That, that, that was more of like my, my younger days, but yeah, I've had that happen okay. where, where it was just like, you know, 
obvious flirtation, you know, stuff like that. And I'm just like, oh, hey, well, it's cool. Like, we're just having fun. I guess we're friends, <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay. Typical yeah, NTP. I think, you know, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a, an accurate meme because it, it, it highlights what the INTP is thinking. Like, it, it's not about, mm. like, something else like the game, uh, like, you know, the sports game, the basketball game. It's 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 like that. Quite, well, like, regardless of how obvious or not, or if it's, like, gray area, like, that's what's on the INTP's mind. I think that's on point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So now this one preoccupation. All of them. When you roast a sensitive friend in your group and try to make up for hurting their feelings. So oh, yeah. I'm Squidward right now after being ghosted. <laughs> <laughs> and we're Patrick and SpongeBob. <laughs> That's, That's what funny. happened. <laughs> so oh. I thought that one was pretty good and accurate. So memes are just so awesome. All yeah, right. If you so you cry. Just little, little <laughs> we won't judge you. It's okay. It's, no, no, I'm gonna cry after. The, um, that's what we do. That I am, and if we will hold it in, <laughs> then we will cry <laughs> once we're alone. All right. Yeah. So here's another. Um, oh, this one's INTP, I think. TJ's when plans go crazy, and TP's when plans go crazy. Oh no. Anyway, so <laughs> mm -hmm. is that is that really <laughs> how is that accurate? Do you, are you just like yeah okay anyway who cares about disaster that's going on yeah, yeah like the the p is perceiving and and i yeah i'm, I'm definitely that bottom portion where it's kind of it is what it is type of thing and accepting <laughs> yeah me too um, i like i lost my phone and i'm like yeah well you know stuff happens when you have phones sometimes you lose them so <laughs> moving on okay so this one is for NFPs when the word weird kid won't stop talking to you and you're trying to be nice. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, I would say that's true. That's why I end up getting a lot of stalkers because I can't one really be like, stop being nice to them. I'm like, can you please stop talking to me? But they don't get the signals. So. <laughs> this one is so on point. I think this one like hits uh, like this, this facial expression. It's so and in comedy. Oh my goodness. This one, yeah, this one really hits home for me. Like I. <laughs> I don't want people to feel left out, but but yeah. sometimes you know yes. you have limits. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, do you and you know who's being left out too? Like you oh, keep absolutely. track. Yeah, yeah, without absolutely. a doubt. Absolutely, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, I'm, like just I can't say you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just hoping. Yeah, I'm just like I'm like, please, can you understand that I'm I I don't want to be in this conversation right now, but I'm too nice to like tell you that I don't want to be in it. So yeah. hopefully you get the so hint. I'm just gonna keep and... being nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, next one. When there are several empty seats on the bus, but someone sits right next, be right beside you, I N blah blah blah, and the E Fs. So that is definitely accurate for me, and that's why I'm so happy that now because of COVID, people are not allowed to sit next yeah. to me. I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> it better not <laughs> yes. happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's just creepy. Okay, when there's so yeah. many empty seats and you sit right next, like it's creepy. It's automatically like. I don't want to talk to you. You're being creepy. Please go away. Oh, like, gosh. Yeah, there's a lot of empty seats and they sit right next to you. Yeah, no way. In movie That's theaters, it's stuff. happened in movie theaters. Like, But then at the same time, it's like I'm too nice to like move away when you sit next to me. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, hey. I'm just like stuck there. Like, right. <laughs> even though I'm really yeah. creeped out, I still want to be nice to you and like not make you not offend, not uh, like hurt your feelings because. Yeah, really cool. that's right. Avoid that conflict. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. So yeah. here's one that involves NFs and NTPs. Um, so the woman is thinking, he's probably thinking of other women, NF. And <laughs> my dog understands several human <laughs> words. I don't understand any dog barks. He may be smarter than me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, what do you guys think? Is that accurate or no for you guys? Legit point on both points. <laughs> like... It's true of NTPs that they think of that, and that's also a brilliant, like, thought. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. women on both accounts, yes. Nice. Um, I love this one. This is just, like, a general, just introvert one. Wendy gets privacy by creating her own book covers, stabbing strangers who talk to you. <laughs> oh, wow. You need that book for when somebody comes and sit next to you. I know. After COVID, after like it's not a restriction anymore, I'm still gonna. Yeah. I need one of those covers, please. To, like, because apparently, the my way is I wear really cute headphones, and 
to me and I'll usually have a book and for me I feel like hey this is a signal I don't want to talk to anyone right now mm. but it doesn't work they'll still try to talk to you and I'm like can you do not see huge headphones like are you blind right. must be an extra I don't know <laughs> so yeah oh that's an invitation to talk to you it's like <laughs> No, yes. I'm, Let I'm me blasting. free you from those headphones. Yeah, <laughs> I'm blasting Japanese metal. Okay, I don't need to talk to anyone right now. Okay, so these are some contradictions of the different uh, Myers Briggs types. But I mean, we're not going to talk go through all of them because who cares about the other ones? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the important you, ones. <laughs> you can see INTP right here, smart but naive. So, oh boy. Parker, is that true? <laughs> Are you smart yes. but naive? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, INFP, timid but brave. Yes. Yeah, I feel I like feel we will definitely be brave when the occasion calls for it. Like I am exactly. I am like when someone I love is hurt or I see injustice, my mama bear instincts will come out like you do not mess with nice people. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. I've like gotten myself in like I have scars from when I've like tried to save like people like and animals from getting hurt. I'm like, no. Um, and my brother, when my young brother, um, like we never really got along, me and my younger brother, but like as soon as I found out that he was getting bullied, I was like, who is this dude? <laughs> like the mm. only person who gets to make fun of my brother is me, no one else. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who is he? I'm going to punch him. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, I didn't end up punching him, but I wanted to know. I got really mad. So you don't do you have mess scars from that? Mess. No, <laughs> because I didn't find him. But I do have scars from uh, when I protected my dog from getting attacked, when I protected my little sister. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah. So the adrenaline will yeah. make me act for sure. Um, and That's just, awesome. you know, in general, like, uh, political stuff, I've done, like, protests and um, yeah. other other things like that. I'm just like, yeah, standing up for what you believe in. That's right. important for sure. So here's one for INTPs. Uh, so tell me, what's your talent? I can offend people without even trying. <laughs> wow, this is funny. I was talking about that, too. So, um, Parker, do you do that? <laughs> is that your um. talent? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I think it does happen sometimes, um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't have to think about it too much, you know, because I will definitely overthink it. I will like definitely overanalyze every single word I say and how it was received and like what people's faces look like. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I kind of now the pendulum has swung a little bit where I kind of just want to say what I think and you know not take responsibility for everybody's feelings, um, but. Do you guys yeah, do this? So, thing? Yes, that's true. That's, that's, <laughs> all of I that was prologue to saying, yep. Because <laughs> I, I, I hate that I do this, but I just, I, I do it where I'll say something and like days later I'll still be like, that was so stupid. But everyone else probably like doesn't even remember what I said. But for me, it's like I will dwell yeah. on it. I'm like, oh my gosh, why did I say that? that I dwell horrible. pretty often. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah. All right. So this is kind of, this meme is kind of in relation to that. So. INFs to themselves something seconds after saying anything you're bothering people be quiet (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) that is true that is true yes i'm always watching myself to make sure like i'm not speaking too long like i'm trying to keep like a timer in my head so yeah Yeah. (laughs) that's a big thing for me i it's really hard for me to like ask for help or ask for anything so i'm like i don't want to bother you i'm sorry and they're like yeah. They're not bothering me, but I'm just like, oh, I'm sorry. So I, I'm always worried about bothering people or being a burden or something. Um, yep, me too. I will carry yeah. everything rather than like ask someone to help <laughs> yeah. me carry stuff, you know. I'll just yeah, load I'm up like, like a pack mule. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> like, no, I'm good. I got strong <laughs> legs. It's all good. I like this. It's a good workout for me. Don't help me. It's an imposition if you help me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm just like, I already have scoliosis. I'm just making it worse, but I'm good. I'm good. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So here's another one. INTPs and INTJs avoiding feelings at any cost. <laughs> yeah. Avoiding feelings. Mm. So how do you feel about that, Parker? Do you avoid feelings at any cost? Or no, is that not accurate? 
Well, again, like I'm trying in this season of my life to not to do that, to avoid, <laughs> you know, feelings and stuff or certain kinds of feelings. Um, so I'm trying to be more like welcoming of, you know, all experiences, but man, it's exhausting. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this one is, oh my God, this one is super relatable. It's like my whole life. Um, I, you know, either TP or X or FP about to win argument by using their quick wit and ability to find contradictions and stuttering while saying the argument out loud. <laughs> yes. So it would just fail. I just fail. I'll be like, man, that would have been good if I wouldn't have messed up the delivery of <laughs> what I was yeah. trying to say. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> delivery anxiety. Yeah. yeah. My, my life hack for that, my life hack to like avoid that um, or best avoid that is to like, I talk really slow, like in a debate or argument, I purposely talk mm. slow and I avoid eye contact so I can like put that much more focus into each word and syllable that comes out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, and I kind of like channel my inner like old man kind of slow professor talk and, and that that that's how I like hack that uh, issue. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I have found that through um, like public speaking classes I've taken slowing down definitely helps because that was the always the no i would get before you talk too fast you talk too fast but when i'm doing it i don't feel like i'm talking fast and so i now i consciously will tell myself to slow down and even though for me it sounds really slow everyone's like no it sounds normal um but it definitely helps uh, but that for me only usually works when it's something i've like i have prepared ahead of time but what's when it's in the moment <clears throat> I, I can't, I'll usually just like, I'll just stay quiet. <laughs> and then later on, I'll think of something better. And I'm like, oh, I could have said that, but it's too late. Now, yeah, so. <laughs> I could have said that. Do you guys rehearse to yourselves like in your car and stuff? Like, do you, do you oh, rehash yeah. things and like, and like play the role of like, I should have said this and like you do it, <laughs> like you play it out out loud. I yeah, do. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We just, especially like, I think it's also like just anxiety it just kind of builds up you like make a really big deal out of something that maybe it's not a yes. big deal but in your mind it's like oh my god it's the worst thing ever <laughs> yep. um so here's the last meme um <laughs> i love it <laughs> introvert home goals <laughs> and it's just <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome <laughs> and it's this one i really love because it literally looks like my favorite place that i've ever visited it literally looks just like that and that was before i even saw this meme i'm like that is so true because my favorite one of, well one of my favorite places uh my top two is this island <laughs> called uh, it's one of the channel islands called jersey and i fell in love with it as soon as i saw it because it was small and there's so many trees it's just green i'm like oh my god this is my dream home it's just not a lot of people lots of trees and nature i could stay here forever it's so quiet <laughs> and I, I i didn't want to leave i was like can i just stay here so when i saw that mean i was like that's perfect i would just add way more trees to that but um, yeah. Yeah. yeah so would you would you guys be okay living somewhere like that or <laughs> would you get tired of it eventually I mean, I, I think it speaks to like, I like my living space to be like spacious. Like, uh, I don't know how people do it with like really tight spaces. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Like I, I like things to be like laid out and spread out uh, type of thing. Uh, so I vibe with it. I, I vibe with the open space. I just hope that I'm not completely cut off to like <laughs> society, but, but yeah, mm -hmm. I, I resonate with that. Yeah. 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 Um, for a while yeah it'd be cool that, yeah. i think what um what got me invited to the podcast uh and i use is where like you were you had the backdrop of like places like you had pictures behind you of like places and i noticed like there were no people in them <laughs> like it, <laughs> like these are all my favorite places no people it's all <laughs> just me you know so yeah. um and then I said something about like one of my fantasies is to just be alone in a lighthouse, like being a, like a lighthouse worker, you know, would be like so much fun. Um, I don't think I could do it forever just because yeah. I, you know, I don't want to just come succumb completely to my introversion, but, but yeah, I would definitely. Yeah. I think that's a, <clears throat> that's kind of the conflict. I think for me, it's like, I do like, you know, meeting people and making connections, but I, when it comes to like living, I kind of, I need my space. Um, yeah. So I've had roommates before and I think out of all the roommates I've had only one at the end of our time together was I like still friends with them. Everyone else is like, 
oh my gosh, I can't wait to get away from you. <laughs> like, I'm so sick of you. Um, but I think it's because we both respected our alone time. I think that was a big thing. Like, she, if, when she wanted alone time, I was happy to give it to her. When I wanted alone time, she understood. I don't know. I don't know if she was an introvert or she was just like an extrovert who understood that I needed my alone time. So I think that's why we got along really well. So as long as people understand that and don't get offended by it, it'd be cool. But um, I like having the the option of having people come over or not. <laughs> like, like, okay, w- because when you're living with people, it's like they're always there. But uh, when you live by yourself, you can have the option. Like, okay, today I do feel like seeing somebody. Um, but right. after a while, like, okay, can you please go? <laughs> My energy is drained now. So That's um, right. I got to watch actually, Queer Eye and cry. Yeah, exactly. And the less people, days. the better. So like with, you know, two probably three is my max and then i can be with you guys for a while um but like more than three i'm just like i'll get drained in like half an hour i'm like okay i need to go be by myself now so we are at the end of the podcast thank you guys so much i'm so sorry for all this like crazy inconvenience thank you guys for sticking around and not ghosting um so like ultimately i'm still here i made it the whole yeah. time <laughs> um so before we end where can people uh stalk you i mean <clears throat> find you on social media no i'm just kidding if you want to be found i don't know if you want to be found but <laughs> you just stalk me <laughs> so where can we find you uh i don't have a really good instagram game i'm just kind of here you know <laughs> like a lot of times when like people are like hey what's your instagram handle and stuff for your comedy and i'm like ah, i don't really have one but mm. i'm i don't know i'm parker underscore cl on instagram um you can look me up on facebook i don't know send me a cool. message i'll talk to you <laughs> okay awesome uh yeah so i'm uh on youtube youtube.com slash mudit verma that's m-u-d-i-t-v-e-r-m-a um and then for all the other socials uh it's i like to mood it um with the numeral two so yeah i like to mood it which is my first name that's Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Yeah. It's a great song. Real to real from the 90s. I like to move Good it. Job, move it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mira, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you for advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you be my PR guy? <laughs> no, yeah. I, I can totally help out. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Send me your rates, man. <laughs> I'm blowing up on OnlyFans, so I got money now. So. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not on there, so uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're not on OnlyFans? No. I'm not. Okay, well, we'll trade. You tell me how to be on, like, YouTube. <laughs> oh, my God. He really oh. did that. He really goes... That's timing. Well, um, that I... <laughs> oh, my God. That was just a very appropriate way for Parker to end this. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. He really, want, he really wants to make me cry by triggering me. I just want to thank uh, Moodit and Parker again for being on my podcast i really appreciate it and i hope anyone listening enjoyed the podcast feel free to follow them please do support them uh they're awesome i hope you you know got some good stuff out of this uh conversation and hopefully we'll see you guys on tour you know when we go on our world tours for comedy maybe it'll be called the the introvert world comedy tour introvert comedy tour i don't know that would be Um, dope yeah we should do we should do like an introvert comedy tour just get all introvert comedians um Definitely. That'd yeah be, be cool. do it have to build and, in like a whole lot of alone time though <laughs> yeah we each have like our separate like dressing rooms so we'll hang out after for like 10 minutes and like okay cool we're, yeah that'll we're be good. exactly <laughs> it's like yeah we're gonna be backstage you know if anybody wants to come meet us we'll be back there for three minutes <laughs> so, come yeah, out and meet all of us our- our energy is just yeah we need to recharge for sure (laughs) all right thank you guys so much thanks for coming at the end parker i thought you had ghosted us for sure (laughs) my gosh i'm using my sister's like uh bluetooth headphones and i (laughs) i've I've done it twice now where if you accidentally press a button it like it ghosts people but i'm not meaning to it's just my nature (laughs) oh okay all right All right, well, thanks again. I already thanked you guys, so be safe, and hopefully I'll see you guys again sometime. If not in a Zoom mic, hopefully in person when we do our tours. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. All right. This was fun.
Thank yeah. you guys for thanks. being here. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thanks for the invite. No problem. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. Uh,